Hi, I wrote this uh, for a blog, women's blog that I write for. And I thought, you know, this is, this is worth taking another step. So I thought I'd just record it and share it with you. Um, it's, the women's blog is talking about women of integrity, something that a woman in the Bible that um, shows you by her actions, by her life, uh, something that really honors God, honored people, helped people. And when you think about women like that, um, you might not think of Dorcas. But we find Dorcas wedged in, in the book of Acts, between Saul conversion and the dramatic over the wall escape and Cornelius' vision. Now this is a part of a slow shift uh, with the Gentile inclusion into God's people and shifting the focus of who they were, which was the Jewish people, to who God was calling, a greater nation, which included everyone who believed. And there we find Dorcas, right smack in the dibble, in the, the, the dibble, that's a new word, in the middle between Saul and Peter, which is stepping away from favoritism. And actually Dorcas had been doing that, which I think is fascinating, but she was doing something that um, God then used to, to, to kind of put these two together. So Dorcas only gets like 189 words but these words show the heart of an intentional woman, which is what I really would like to be known as, except you don't want me sewing, and that's what Dorcas did. So, uh, Acts 9. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated into Greek means Dorcas. She was rich in acts of kindness and charity, which she continually did. During that time, it happened that she became sick and died, and when they had washed her body, they laid it in an upstairs room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, come to us without delay. So Peter got up at once and went with them. When he arrived, they brought him into the upstairs room, and all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing him all the tunics and robes that Dorcas used to make while she was with them. But Peter sent them all out of the room and knelt down and prayed. Then turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and helped her up. Then he called in the saints, all God's people, and the widows, and he presented to them, to her, to them, alive. That's from the Amplified. So really interesting because Dorcas was known to everyone, Greeks and Jews alike, because both of her both of her names were used, Tabitha in Aramaic and Dorcas in Greek. And we see her sandwiched in between these two major eye openers that God is not gonna show favoritism and Dorcas was already doing that. So by mentioning her name in both these languages, it kind of leads us to believe that both Greeks and Aramaic's families were being loved on, cared for and provided for. And it doesn't really specifically tell us what she did in that first part. It just simply says, she was rich in acts of kindness and charity, which she continually did. Now, some versions use the word always. Now, it's not safe to use the word always, as we tend to use it as hyperbole. But if Luke used it, um, I guess, and, and talked about it, I guess we can assume it was true. Always is very definitive. It means always, consistently, reliable, continually, time after time, and as sure as the sun's gonna come up to Mars. That's kind of what the word always or continually be. It's an ongoing thing. Now Dorcas was always or continually going about doing good and helping the poor. Now we don't know a lot of things and our inquisitive minds want to know. We don't know where Dorcas lived. We don't know what she did for a living. We don't know how she supported herself. That, that's not told us. But it leads us to believe that Dorcas and the poor were maybe not in that same second sentence because it was used to compare. Now, Dorcas was always doing good and helping the poor. She was intentional about her actions. And how we find out about how intentional she was is when we really start reading a little deeper. The way that Dorcas showed her intentionality is best described in Luke as he shares what the people did when Peter was summoned to come when she was ill. Now, it doesn't seem like the community of believers that Dorcas was a part of even considered the thought that she could be healed or after she was dead, raised from the dead. They just wanted Peter to be a part of their mourning. And part of mourning often involves sharing the gifts that we've been given by the one who has left us. Now, I went to a, a memorial service, a celebration service for June Blanchon a couple weeks ago. And I knew her as a little kid. Um, went to Jamaica with her in the 70s, her and Bob, and knew her and, and loved going hanging and when she was in Rochester's, going to the Meadows and sitting and talking to, to June. It was really, really interesting because they asked people, if she made you something, bring it, and mostly quilts. She was a big quilter. So 
the church pews were lined with quilts. And we sat on, I mean, we sat on the back. I didn't sit on them, but yeah, I did. I leaned back on them. And I, I just kind of felt that June was right with us because we saw the things she had made while she was living. And each quilt had meaning, and each quilt was specific to the ones she was making it for, and many of them for great-grandchildren and grandchildren. And, and you knew that it was prayed over when she made it. So now Luke tells us that the people were mourning, who were mourning were widows. They stood beside him, weeping and showing him the tunics and robes that Dorcas used to make while she was with them. And this is where I key in on the intentionality of what Dorcas does, did. I sit up and think, I want to be like her. Now, she knew the people. She knew their sizes. She knew their needs. Dorcas just didn't make a shirt or a robe or a piece of clothing and say, hey, good luck. If it fits you, I'm sorry. It has three holes. It's too long, but hey, it's a shirt. No, Dorcas knew the people that she was always doing good for, and she knew what they needed. She knew their size. She knew if they had long arms or short legs. Dorcas was intentional by knowing what the need was. When you don't know the need and you just give randomly, that's the time where people might say, oh good, she's gone. Now I don't have to wear that shirt around anymore because it doesn't fit and it's scratchy and it's going to Goodwill. People wanted to see, wanted Peter to see what she had done for them. Dorcas lived an intentional life of always doing good, but doing good where good was needed and where doing good would actually do good. Now, I've spent many hours with friends in the challenges of life. And when people are struggling, everybody wants to do something. And I call it a get out of jail free card. You bring a casserole. Maybe it's a Minnesota thing, but everybody brings a casserole. But what if a casserole isn't what's needed? What if the lawn needs mowing? What if the mortgage needs to be paid? What if the kid's orthodontist bill just came due? You know, I have accepted many pots of food at the door of people's houses for them. And part of me wanted to say, I wish you would have called and asked. We have some big needs. It's not donuts, cake, or hot dish. Dorcas knew the need because she was involved in their lives. She was in the homes of the community of both the Jews and the Greeks, and she met the needs because she knew the needs existed. Dorcas knew what the need was because she was involved in their lives. She was in the homes of the community. She lived life with them. Now, Philippians 2.4 reminds us, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also the interests of others. You know, we know our own interests. We know them very well. We know what we need, what we want. Yet, how much time do we take to really, really discover the interests of another's? So the challenge is to be intentional. Think like Dorcas. It's not just about being rich in kindness and charity. It's about knowing what's needed and what will enrich. We can be kind and be inconsiderate when we give something that's not needed. Wisdom goes looking into the interests of others. So the richness, those kindness and acts of charity are a welcome relief to the hearts of those who receive them. Just some food for thought.